If you've read the title, uh, you'll know that today's tutorial is a line and wash. That's what it's called, line and wash. So line and wash is a beautiful art form um, that it's, it's for watercolor, but yes, yeah, for watercolor. You could do it with watercolor pencils. You could do it with um, anything that's maybe even acrylic if it's watered down, definitely gouache. Um, but today, of course, we're talking about watercolor. Now, line and wash is a very simple way. It's a very beautiful way, but it's simple in that the concept is simple. You just, you, you do your sketch and then you add the color in a kind of quick, almost tossed on way. And this is something that uh, you would have seen a lot. Let's see, back in the manuscripts in the 15th and 16th, 1600s, they would have done um, all the little drawings on the side or in some, some magazines, they would do little sketches and they would do a little bit of wash on top. Or let's see, when, when, when paint is an issue, when you're printing something and you don't want too much paint or too much detail, you just want a general feeling for color, but it's mostly, oh, there she goes. Uh, but it's mostly um, a, a feeling, mostly a, a, a line drawing with a, a hint of color. Then this is what, when line and wash would be used. So please excuse the little goat. I wonder if you guys can actually hear her. Um, I'm happy the chickens aren't making any noise. That's wonderful. I try to do this early in the morning when I have the most energy and I'm totally motivated. The chickens are just so noisy. It's all right, Bella. You're okay. She's standing on the back porch. Okay, so that's the general layout of my outer lines. Now I wanna come in here and just give a little bit of detail to all these bumps on the inside. Now line and wash is a lot of fun. It's something, if you can draw, but you just wanna put some color down and you don't wanna spend so much time doing detail and so much painting, um, then I highly recommend trying your hand at line and wash because it's a lot of fun. It's also really good if you wanna get in there and do more drawing with your, with your pen. So you wanna do more um, detail but not with the brush, just with the pen. Uh, more detail, more hatching, cross hatching. We're gonna talk about what that means later in another tutorial. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's a little mesmerizing. So let me put a few more of these dots in here. Okay, so while I'm, while I'm finishing this up, let's look at something else. Now, these are examples, this is something I filmed a little while ago, but these are examples of line and wash. Uh, the first one is a, a carrot. And you can see that the line is down. This is a, a kind of a complex line and wash with the carrot. The, um, the lines are very detailed, but the color is also perfect. It's not kind of flowing just any old willy-nilly. Whereas if you look at the, the pears or uh, the pie, the line is a little more sketchy, a little more thrown together, and the colors are kind of tossed on. Now you can do line and wash any way you want. Um, I highly recommend taking some time to look it up, maybe looking up some other YouTube tutorials on it, or even better, going online and looking up some of the artists who are famous for it. Just look up line and wash and see what comes up art is famous for line and wash. <laughs> um, and also landscaping. There's a lot of people that like to do it when they're doing landscaping because if you're on location, if you're doing like a cityscape, um, it can be a lot of work to try to get all those details in at once, but it's a lot easier to do a quick sketch. Just kind of throw your sketch together and then come back uh, with some color and you're almost almost like a study You're just throwing your color in there for the purpose of suggesting color for the purpose of remembering what the color was uh, Maybe to gather a little bit of shadow So in this case you could do the background as a wash and leave this and just throw on some color or some very loose color or you could um, Just throw some loose color and no background like it's really simple and it's really fun 
Now, I don't know if this is gonna bleed. If it does bleed, I think it'll add interest. And if it doesn't, well, that's good too. I think because it is a, oh, there's a line and wash, I don't want, I want it to look a little more like this. I don't want it to look too specific, too particular. So maybe I'll come along and just put some water down on a few of them. Oh, it is gonna bleed, that's pretty. Okay. Try not to touch those edges too much. And I'm really going for a hint, right? So using that color as somewhat of a base, let's add a little more water here. And the middle is also going to have this beautiful brown, obviously, because it's going to be activated. Now, if I didn't want the ink to be activated, I would use something like Indian ink. And for this piece, I just decided I'd use the brown because it's lovely. So do whatever you want. Um, Indian ink won't move when you put it down. Now, I think I want to do something like a purple or a red. So let's go with um, magenta, quinacridone magenta, and uh, rose adore mix. And I'm just mixing them right on the brush. And I'm going to drop, drop them in, see if that works. And just toss the paint. Now, if I wanted the paint to move slower or if I wanted it to dry slower as I'm putting this on, or if I wanted it to be just shiny, um, I could add some gum arabic. And I did a tutorial on gum arabic just a few days ago on how to add that into your work and what it can do for you. So because watercolor dries uh, um, with a matte finish, sometimes it's nice to have a little more shine to it. And for that reason, watercolor um, gum arabic could be a lot of fun. And again, I'm just mixing the rose d'or with some magenta, quinacridone magenta, which makes this beautiful deep red. Okay, very pretty. Now, ideally, I should let that dry because if you you could let it dry, you could not let it dry. You could leave it and just let it flow everywhere. Um, if you guys are familiar with Angela Ferris' work, you would know that her work flows everywhere all the time. It's absolutely beautiful. I recommend checking it out. Um, she's on YouTube, Angela Fair. But if you wanted a little more controlled, maybe more like my traditional work, you might not want the two colors to touch. So down here we have green, and again, this is line and wash, so I don't want it to be too particular. I'm just going to try to tap in some of my green and see how it moves on its own. And it's all on one side now, so if I come back with a little bit of water and I add more water on this side. And then I let it move. I'm actually whipping out some of that water so it doesn't bleed, bleed back in. Okay, so I'm going to add a layer of yellow, some lemon yellow, and I just want to just tap it on. I was just suggesting something. okay I think actually if it bleeds out into each of these ones it might be pretty kind of anchoring them you know flowers have all these beautiful colors on the bottoms okay I'm going to leave it alone and see what happens move it around put a little more 
right there. Now yellow will move other colors. It'll push things out of the way. Um, it'd be great if white did that, but only yellow does it. There we go. So this is my example of a line and wash. You can go as crazy as you want. You can keep it as simple as you want. Um, I really like the way this looks. I'm really happy with it. If it was done with a black, I think it would have a totally different feel. But because it's brown, the brown feels like it's part of the painting, part of the, the piece, not like it's the outline. But that is just my opinion. So you guys can tell me in the comments below if you like the brown and if you like the bleed. I'm interested to know. I hope you guys like this. There will be more information over on my school. I'll find some reference photos and put them on my school for you guys. And I'll put the final image once it's dried and the list of the materials I've used, the colors I've used, etc. And possibly even um, the sketch itself as a downloadable so that you guys can download the sketch or a sketch like it. Maybe I can do another one because this one has obviously been painted on. Uh, do another one and then you guys can download it and have a go. So it's kind of like a little uh, adult coloring page. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Toodaloo!